Welcome to another episode of Class Haven Farms. So what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be doing the 100-hour service on our John Deere Z540M zero turn with a 62-inch deck. As you can see, we have one of the home maintenance kits. And on a 100-hour service on this machine, we're going to be doing the spark plugs, the air filter, the fuel filter, and oil change. I'll also be putting new sharpened blades on this, greasing the deck, and getting the pressure washer out and cleaning this thing up. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and do the spark plugs because the engine is cold. So I would highly recommend when you change your spark plugs out, try to do it when your engine is cold. So I'm going to change those out first. Uh, we'll do the fuel filter also while this is cold and we'll do the air filter. Then we'll start it up, get it up to operating temperature, get the oil nice and hot, and then we'll drain the oil out. So this engine has two spark plugs on it and I'll give you the part number. I'll also put this in the description down at the bottom. I'll also put the home maintenance kit number, uh, part number at the bottom also, but for each individual part, I'll give you part numbers. Now, I buy all of my stuff through JohnDeerParts.com. I'm not getting any money for, for them for this, but this is what I've always done. If you, just a little tip, if you go on Black Friday to their website, to JohnDeerParts.com, they usually give you 20% off and free shipping. So that's when I order all my stuff for, from a zero turn, from a 790, for my LT160, I'll usually order everything that I need um, for the following spring for Black Friday. So just keep that in mind. Um, so just real quick, the NGK part number for these spark plugs is B as in boy, P as in Paul, R as in Robert, 4, E as in Edward, S as in Sam, 6578. And they're NGK spark plugs. So I'll show you guys real quick where they are located. So there's your first spark plug there. So there's your boot. And there's your second one on this side. So to take this off, now I will tell you, I did pre-loosen this boot up. It might still be tight. Yep, kind of hard to do with one hand. So just pull the boot off. It, if you see, this line right here is probably the best place. You can get your fingers on there, it gives you a nice tight hold so you can pull that spark plug boot off and then there's your spark plug so I'll go ahead and set you guys back up sorry for the jerkiness there the size on this it's uh, one of the bigger spark plugs so 13 16 socket is what I have here and then once you get it loose you should just be able to Spin it right out. And this is the first time I've ever changed spark plugs on this. I just hit 100 hours on this machine. I've had this mower for going on three seasons now. I absolutely, absolutely love this mower. As you guys know, I'm a big deer guy, so that's what I like to have. I want to make sure I get this set up right. Kind of a one-man operation here. So at 100 hours, yep, be a good idea to change these spark plugs out if you can see that. Now when I do my spark plugs, one thing that I like to do is I always want to check my gap. Most of the time with these NGKs, uh, the gap is pretty dead on. And I looked in my manual, and my manual calls for in inches uh, 0 0.030 in inches, and I think it's, uh, I don't think I wrote it down, uh, 0.75 millimeter in millimeters. So just have my spark plug gap tool. So I'll just check that real quick. I just want it to be snug, which it is. So I know I'm good on that. 
I just always like to check the gap on my spark plug. That's kind of how it was brought up with my dad and my grandfather. You always check that. The next thing that I do, especially because from time to time you will get this machine wet, or maybe when you're cleaning it up after you get done using it before you put it away. So I like to put anti-seize on my spark plug threads. That way, if some moisture does happen to get down on these threads, and I go to change this thing out in another 100 hours, I don't have to worry about this thing rusting and seizing and me taking a chance of breaking it off in the, the head when I go to put it back on. So just anti-seize on the threads, run it back in there by hand. So just run it in by hand. And then what I like to do is I just like to snug it up with the ratchet. So that's good there. This does call for 15 foot-pounds of torque. So I'll just grab a little torque wrench. It's just me personally, that's what I like to do. You don't have to do this. You could just, when you feel it get snug, you're good to go. So I'll just get this thing to 15 foot-pounds. And they weren't really tight when I broke them loose. So 15 foot-pounds really isn't much. There we go. 15 foot-pounds. So if you've never used one of these, it's just got a gauge on it. and You just wait for that red needle to line up with wherever your foot-pounds need to be. All right, after I do that... The next thing that I like to do, and again, you don't have to do this, but it's something that I like to do again, because if we're spraying this thing off with a hose or pressure washer or whatever, it's a chance for water to get onto the spark plug. So I like to put dielectric grease on there. And all I do is put a nice little glob, and I'll grab you real quick. Just put it right there in on the boot. And then I will just push it to where it snaps onto the spark plug. So now she's good to go. And it's got a nice weather tight seal so I don't have to worry about water and contaminants and stuff getting in there and messing it up. I'll go ahead and do this other side since you guys just watched me do that. It's kind of repetitive to do the same thing. The next thing we'll do is an air filter. So to do the air filter you just have these plastic screw tab things, whatever you call them here. Just t twist them counterclockwise. Take this whole shroud off, and that will take you to your air filter. So I'll show you an up-close look of that, if you're not familiar. So here is your air filter. It's got the sock on it with the filter. Of course, got a new sock here, and a new air filter. Um, and it's just a plastic tab here to loosen this clamp. It is nice in the fact that you don't need tools to do this, uh, but this thing's plastic. So I'm wondering how long that's going to be before it breaks on me. Because you know how plastic can be, especially with this thing getting hot and cold and hot and cold. So once you've loosened that up, slide your air filter out. Now to do the new one, something that I like to do is I pre-soak these in oil. So every time that I service this, at 50 hours it calls for you to service the oil. Uh, engine oil and filter, I will always take this sock off, clean it in nice hot soapy water, let it dry out, and then re-oil it, and I always blow my air filter out. That's every time I do an oil change, that's what I do. The reason why I like to pre-soak this is it helps catch a lot of the dirt and particles so they don't have a chance of going through there because they attach themselves to this sock. It's just what I like to do. You don't have to do that. It's something that I learned a long, long time ago working on lawn mowers and things like that. So now you're just going in a reverse order. You put your sock on. Sock just fits over. And again, like I said, every time I do an oil change, 
I take this air filter out, hot soapy water to clean the sock up, take my air compressor, blow this out, even if I'm not changing it out, I just like to always clean it up. Inside of this boot out, I like try to keep any kind of dirt and particles from going down in my engine. Just take care of your stuff, man. Take care of your stuff, you'll get time out of it. That's what my grandfather used to always say. So just slide that boot back in and then just tighten this up. The next thing we'll do is the fuel filter. We'll do that before the engine gets hot. All right, so your fuel filter is right here. And as you can see, it's got two clamps, so one here and one here. We'll go ahead and change that out real quick. Just got a pair of long handle clamps. Just squeeze them, pull them out of the way. Have my new fuel filter here that came in the kit it'll have an arrow on it to tell you which way it should go so it'll go like this and since this is the first time i'm changing this out it'll be a little tight so you just i always take my top hose off first Take the top off first. And then that way I can get the top set. And then I'll pull the bottom hose because it will, you know, gravity will drain it. And this is why it's good to do your fuel filter when it's cold because <laughs> you don't want a hot engine. I mean, I'm literally right on top of the engine doing this fuel filter. Set our clamp back. We're good to go. There's the old one. Bring it some fuel out. Now we'll go ahead and get ready to do an oil change and start this thing up, make sure everything's good to go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start it up. It's going to take a little bit because obviously we got to prime that fuel filter because we just put a new one on there. So it's going to turn over for a little bit. We want to make sure that there's no problems with spark plugs, air filter, all that stuff since that's what we've done. So let's go ahead and get her started. She's nice and hot. So, this is, if you can see it, sorry, this is the plug for the oil, the engine oil. I have a drain pan underneath. We'll go ahead, pop that loose, let that drain out. While the engine oil is draining, we'll go ahead and pull the oil filter. That's right here. It's always fun when it's nice and hot. But that's the best time to do your oil. So you get it all out of the cylinder head. Let that drain out a little bit. All right, so got our new oil filter, which the part number for this is A is in Adam, M as in Mike, 12542. We'll 
go ahead and put some oil on the gasket here. And just do a nice little clean out of our threads and our little drain pan thing on the bottom there. While I'm doing this, I've still left that drain plug out to let it drain all the old oil out. You don't have to put these on real tight. I like to get them tight by hand. And then I will just snug it with this wrench. There we go. There we go. Put our drain plug back in, just clean the threads up. I like to put fresh oil on the O-ring there. It's kind of like you do the oil filter. Some fresh engine oil on there. Clean the inside of these threads up. This calls for a quart and a half of oil. They give you two quarts in these home maintenance kits. Um, I like to use, as, as I've said before in my videos, I like to use all John Deere stuff. Um, but really, for the price of oil right now, you really can't go wrong with just buying this. Because with one of my other mowers, I was like, oh, I'll just get oil from Walmart. And uh, by the time I went to go get... 10w30 oil even like the cheap walmart grade oil i could have just bought this for a couple more cents so i would just get turf guard that's what john deere uses when you go to the dealer you pay all that money to go to the dealer and you're going to pay just as much for walmart brand oil so everything is ridiculously expensive now so we'll go ahead and put some oil in it just use a funnel makes your life so much easier So after we put our oil in, we will then start it up, make sure we don't have any leaks, then let it sit for a little bit so the oil can return back down to the bottom, and then we'll just check the level. Because one thing you always got to remember when you change the oil on anything is with this oil filter, it mounts on the side so you can't pre-fill this oil filter. So you're always going to have your oil filter suck up some of that brand new oil, so it's always a good idea after you filled everything up to go back behind it and just double check that you're at the right level. So now that the oil's changed, the air filter's changed, and the two spark plugs are changed out, the next thing we need to do is change the blades on the mower deck. Now you can do it the conventional way and take the mower deck off, slide it out. What I found to be a lot easier is I use the Pro Lift Zero Turn slash uh, Lawn Mower Lift to lift the zero turn or the ride mower if you have that up in the air so you can get underneath it and take the three blades off. All you have to do with this thing is you just drive it forward, put it into these racks, and then you can lift it up. So let's go ahead and pull this thing on. So to lift this thing up, all you have to do is close the valve off, and then just pump it up. It's got locks here on the bottom, and you'll hear as it slides in, it'll hit those locks. And that's just a safety lock so that it won't slide forward when you're underneath it. Now, I just got under here not too long ago because I actually had something get caught up under the deck. Uh, so anytime you get under here and you start doing this, it's always good to clean the deck out, take a putty knife, kind of get to some of this heavy stuff, 
uh, the grass that builds up and things like that. Uh, but like I said, I just did that on this not too long ago. So we're just going to swap these blades out real quick. It's uh, 18, uh, 19 millimeter, and we'll just knock them off. And the new blades will just go back on in the reverse order that you took the old blades off. So I'll put this one on and then I'll turn you guys off and knock the rest out. Because you just watch me take three of them off and you're going to watch me put one on. The three blades are on, but the next thing we need to do is we need to grease the three spindles and the one idler pulley. Uh, Zerk. So in order to get to those, they're pretty easy on this side. You just go through this hole here and on the other side spindle, you go through that hole there. But the center one is underneath where your feet rest while you're using the mower. What you can do is this adjustment here that you have for to set your depth of your gauge or your uh, deck, I'm sorry, is a little wrench. So you can loosen this bolt here. Take this bolt out and then you can lift this entire assembly up and you can see you have your center spindle there and then I can't see it right now but I'll clean that zerk up but you have a um, zerk on top that idler pulley there. So we'll get those all greased up and get this thing set down. Everything has been greased. I uh, checked the belt to make sure the belt's in good shape. There's no cracks in the belt, nothing like that. Checked underneath the deck, make sure there was no cracks in any of the welds or anything. So now it is time to set this thing down on the ground. So I have got it in between the locks right here. So I'll lift this up, hold this up, and then I will just slowly let the hydraulic cylinder down. It'll back its way out. Just keep the lock here from locking itself in. And it'll take it all the way to the ground. And then all you got to do is back this thing out and you're good to go. So that wraps up the service on the John Deere Z540M zero turn. <laughs> if you guys have stayed through this entire video, uh, you notice that in the beginning of this video, I was at my old house because that was back when I was married. Uh, so I originally started shooting this video in late june or early july of 2021 i can't remember which one it was but it was back that far and uh, obviously i'm here at the new place um so uh just thought it was funny i found that video and i was like hey i never finished this video let's just go ahead and do that so i hope you guys uh, found this video helpful if you have a 540m or something similar i've been really happy with this zero turn it's it's done an awesome job for me especially here at the new property i mean the old property was three acres uh, this one's six. Uh, it definitely has, I have a lot more hills here on this property than I did uh, at the other property. So, you know, you kind of got to be careful with your zero turn or really any kind of riding mower for that, for that case. But I'll tell you, down in this bottom pasture, I can zip with this thing. 62 inch deck, I can hammer down and get through, get through that in a good timely manner. Um, so I uh, do have some really good news about the channel. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and follow us along. Uh, we hit that thousand mark. We're going to do some giveaways and I've created a logo for the channel. So I'm going to put that here at the end and uh, got some stickers made up. So if, uh, if you're interested in, you know, swapping stickers with me, 
if you got a sticker for your channel, you know, send it to me. I'll put it on a splitter or I'll, I'll put it on something that I got here. Uh, and then same, if you would like to get a, get a sticker from Class Haven Farms, just uh, you can email me at classhavenfarms at gmail.com. Uh, we're also on Instagram, Class Haven Farms. And uh, to, starting today, I just started the Facebook page for Class Haven Farms. So those are some of the ways that you can reach out to me. Uh, you know, just get me your contact info and I'll get a sticker sent out to you and same. you send me one, I'll send you one. Um, so again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you.